You are not public servants. You're his servants. You should all be ashamed of yourself. December 10th, 2020. It's not, it's not like they didn't know. It's not like they didn't know exactly who Donald Trump is, okay? So here's some receipts for you. I want to start with Ted Cruz. Good. Perhaps <laughs> the thirstiest. Thirsty. Someone give that man a drink of water. Thirstiest of all. Lovely. Who offered to argue this case himself before the court. Remember when he argued this? I'm going to tell you what I really think of Donald Trump. Yep. This man is a pathological liar. I remember. He doesn't know the difference between truth and lies. He lies practically every word that comes out of his mouth. Exactly. The man ca cannot tell the truth, but he combines it with being a narcissist. A narcissist at a level I don't think this country's ever seen. Yep. Now he's going to get somebody named Lion to argue your case. You have to... <laughs> I was at the opposing counsel, and they said, I'd say, well, well, first of all, you have someone that you named Lion Ted yourself argue your case. So where's the credibility? That was Ted Cruz 2016. 2020, you know, he got a whole new model. Different chip put in. Where's Marco Rubio, who had Trump pegged as a con artist long before he attempted the ultimate con? the grift and theft going on right now. Our con artist is about to take, take over the Republican Party and the conservative movement, and we have to put a stop to it. Congratulations, Marco. Maybe it's your M-A-R-C-O. Maybe your name should be M-A-R-K-O, because you've been the perfect mark. Lindsey Graham called him a race-baiting, xenophobic, religious bigot, threw in a kook just for good measure or bad measure. He's a race-baiting, xenophobic, religious bigot. My favorite. He doesn't represent my party. I think he's a kook. I think he's crazy. I think he's unfit for office. You're no different. That was the Lindsey Graham of 2015, 2016, before he got his chip, his upgrade or downgrade or whatever it is. What a shame. Lindsey Graham is supporting that man now over a man he once considered one of his closest friends. If you can't admire Joe Biden as a person, then it's probably, you got a problem. <laughs> you need to do some self-evaluation. Because what's not to like? He's this the political prostitute. What a shame. Right. He is as good a man as God ever created. And those people who vote for him. With tears. <laughs> With tears. Joe Biden is as good a man as God ever created. Lindsay. No, let me stop before I go too far. <laughs> Y'all know. know. Religious Grandpa and racist nuts. That's narcissist. all. Ooh. Donald Trump is a delusional narcissist and an orange-faced windbag. A speck of dirt is way more qualified to be president. <laughs> yep. Now they are all working. They all Trump's number not so long They are trump licking trump lickens. They still know. Yep. Oh, they know. And we were warned about something like this. Warned by some of the people who know him the best, like his former fixer and keeper of secrets, Michael Cohen, who told Congress this. I fear that if he loses the election in 2020, Beautiful. that there will never be a peaceful transition of power. Michael Cohen said that. Predictive. How would Michael Cohen know? Because he was with him for years, his fixer. His ghostwriter on The Art of the Deal, who said he will never concede. He will never concede. He won't attend the inauguration. Uh, he can't He can't concede because on November to concede 12th. for him is to accept that he is a failure, and that is an intolerable thing for him. So. He has to keep this delusional idea alive that he was cheated. And you're going right along with it. His former White House communications director warned us. The notion of him conceding, I don't think is going to happen, Erica, ever. 
because uh, I think he's manifesting. That's part of his whole conspiracy cabal, and that's how he's going to try to keep these supporters and acolytes tied to him. Uh, he's got a very large group of people believing these falsehoods and lies, uh, and I think that's his uh, game plan. Previous opponent uh, and co-president in his eyes and Fox News's eyes, Hillary Clinton, warned us. She lost to him and then conceded the next day. I think it is um, a fair point to raise as to whether or not, if he loses, um, he's going to go quietly or not. Uh, and we have to be ready for that. Even his own family, his niece, warned us. Wow. We should definitely be worried and on our guard and vigilant about what happens. And I think, again, the pressure needs to be yeah. on Republican leadership because I don't know that there's anybody else who can contain mm -hmm. um, the damage that Donald is apparently perfectly willing to inflict yeah. upon the country he's ostensibly leading. Maybe. They all warned us. They all warned us and you know also warned us in a way so <clears throat> did he <clears throat> you don't understand me you don't understand me but that's okay you'll understand me after the election but you don't understand me now wow well we're gonna have much more tonight on the outrageous attempted robbery of the presidency that is underway right now but we also have some huge news on the pandemic tonight when can you get the vaccine and when is it safe? Yep, this guy, Trump, made millions, millions of dollars from bankruptcy. Now he's doing the same. He's at it again. He's making hundreds of millions of dollars from loss. He's incredible. He's the number one swindler in history. He's raising more than $200 million. Perhaps right now it's reaching to $300 million by spreading this lie that he won. He lost by about 7 million votes. But there are two groups of people who are ready to believe any lie. Evangelical Christians and racists. Unfortunately, they don't care. Anyway, we are witnessing another historical event about how humans could be evil, absolutely evil. And Trump and his supporters, they are destroying American democracy. If there, is, there was some democracy, semblance of democracy, and uh, we'll not have that anymore, perhaps. God help us.